Thank you. It's, it's great to be here. Um, I will take you back to 1986. And uh, in Sweden, that was a, a year of two distinct haircuts, as you can see on the picture. <laughs> they were representing two different music styles, and I was 13 at the time. And considering that, you put a lot of thinking into choices. Then this happened, Chernobyl, 26th of April. It was my first real, real life encounter with science, when scientific knowledge is sitting straight in your face. Uh, I still remember my mother. She was talking about Millie Sievert, Becky Rell. She was not a woman of science, but she was trying to communicate something that was important. And I could pick that up. At the time, Sweden was contaminated with rain and winds from Russia, and information was scary and contradiction. You know about this. This happened in Japan recently. And it's quite a, quite a challenge to meet that information. I want to go back to, just briefly, back to 86. If this is 86 in a very simplified version, I would say this is 2011. Today we, we are sitting in the middle of a scientific cocktail of units. Units represented from anything from climate data to energy consumption to our own personal consumption. And they tend to be communicated from science in numbers. Numbers that are represented in specialists and are some, some kind of entity in understanding those numbers are that we, we tend to look upon them as uh, knowledge barriers. But they really, what are they really saying to us? I mean, on a personal level, I spent 2.4 tons of CO2 flying here. And today in Hawaii, the measurements are saying 393 ppm, and the ocean, pH 8.14. What are they saying? I mean, it's an information coming over us. Well, let's see, what are they saying? Science, what are the scientific communities saying? Well, there's a lot of discussion around that, of course, but just take me one example. This is uh, uh, from the magazine Science, a uh, prestigious magazine. And it was an article about scientific outreach and trying to describe what science can be and what science cannot be. It's basically an article saying that this is an apple and this is a pear a language of science, and I will just read, read out this for you. When someone says that society should wait until scientists are absolutely certain before taking any action, it is the same as saying society should never take action. Well, to me that says that science is a great knowledge machine, a great knowledge machine, but it will never really take action on, on hopefully, in the best of worlds, policy will take action. But I think we should know, do more about this. We should think more in these terms. What are we saying? We need to find new links into science. We need to redefine the relationship where we're not just passive receivers, but more active participants. I think there are two key things in that. One is understanding. If you understand something, you will walk a long way. And the other thing is tools. And I've seen, we've seen a number of tools presented today that are great for that, I think. I will show you some examples of what I mean with tools. I think this is an interesting one. It's been occurring here in Japan after the crisis, and it's a Geiger meter showing uh, radiation levels around, uh, around Japan. And this is, of course, this is a data gathering system. But nevertheless, it's occurring from a need of information. This is another example that we're working on at the Interactive Institute. This traditional is an X-ray picture of a hand, a traditional, very specialist instrument. We introduced a project called Virtual Autopsy Table for about a year ago. And the reason why I'm showing this is that it's kind of getting another touch of understanding. By using visualization, you kind of get into the data in another way. It's a, it's a great tool to re represent data that are quite complex. And this principle of presenting data 
I think is very useful in the sense you can do different cuts and uh, you can, as you can see on the video behind me here. And what is most interesting with this, I think, is that you, you get new stakeholders to talk to each other. You get new people around the table. It's not just the specialist talking. Another example, you know this one, energy consumption meter, the old style. This is another way to present that data. It's a cord showing direct representation in, in form of light. Then even a kid will get energy consumption. As my last, last thing, I will go straight into the oceans. Uh, me, myself, uh, I'm a water person, and we started digging into, uh, digging into the oceans for some years ago in our research. The oceans is about 70% of the planet. It embodies 100 million species. And it's one of our main resources. And to be totally honest, I was surprised by the status of it. Even being a water person, I was like, oh my god, what's going on here? So we've been, for we've been forming a, a team of research groups um, and some NGOs working together. Uh, and what we're doing, proposing and just starting is a project called Ocean Search. The aim is to build a fleet of private sailing boats that works as research boats. So we'll be equipping them with traditional specialist tools and inviting the sailing community to t participate in this. And as a major thing I think is important is tools. As I said before, uh, to be able to, to produce and to share tools so what we're doing in the project are building tools in terms of sensor technology, but also what this project mostly, I think, quality-wise, is about storytelling and to share information. So the visualization and the social networking is a very important part of the project. So we're trying to intertwine sensor technology with the social technologies. So eventually we are then sailing off in about, the first boat is leaving in about two months from Stockholm, and it will uh, sail from Stockholm and go out to the Atlantic in September, and we'll be sailing for about three months. Uh, so I, I think, as a wrap-up of this, it is possible to go from what are we saying, what are they saying, to what are we saying, if we have the right tools and, and uh, the right uh, collaborations going. Thank you very much.